Welcome back to your Michael Corrin show. And it's half time, and uh, we always reintroduce the panel at half time, but in our one on one interviews, it's pretty easy, really. Uh, here's the book, it's up on the screen any moment now. Taken by Storm the, the Troubled Science, Policy, and Politics of Global Warming. It's published by Keith Porter, they're the best publisher in the world. Happened to be my publisher uh, as well, and co author of the book, Professor Ross McKittrick. Uh, what's all this about hockey sticks? Well, um, uh, the hockey stick graph, this was a. Um, Back in 2001, the, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, which is it's a, a UN body that every five years puts out a big assessment of the science. And um, uh, they, uh, they like, they're, they're especially alert to any evidence that really promotes the global warming story. Mm -hmm. And they give it lots of promotion. And in uh, 2001, they latched onto this result that was fairly fresh in the literature that. Um, uh, that had to do with what's called paleoclimatology, or the study of the behavior of the climate from way back before we had thermometers. Now, for decades, the standard view has been that over the past thousand years, there was a medieval era, which was very warm compared to the present. You know, Greenland, the Vikings were able to have farms in Greenland. There's, all over the world, there's, there's evidence that it was warmer and, and basically better for people. And then uh, things got cold uh, for about 500 years up to the 1800s, and then we're in a warming phase coming out of the Little Ice Age, as it was called. In uh, the 2001 IPCC report, they changed all that and presented a graph that looks like a hockey stick lying on its side. So it said the mean state of the climate was actually almost constant up until about the year 1900, and then suddenly the temperatures started rising rapidly. And uh, this is very dramatic. It was an extremely effective graphic uh, for getting people worried about global warming. And um, it featured prominently in the debates over Kyoto. The government of Canada had it on its website. Actually, the government of Canada quoted from it in a pamphlet they sent to households across the country. Uh, and governments around the world did the same thing. Al Gore features it in his movie. And um, then in 2003, uh, a fellow that I've gotten to know quite well now, Stephen McIntyre, is a businessman in Toronto. He, um, he had a bit of time off from work. He, got, he was very curious about this graph that he kept seeing because to him it looked like a stock market promotion. It uh, looked like the kind of graphs he saw in his financial work where, you know, uh, revenues are flat, but just wait and they're going to take off. So he emailed the author and asked him for the data because he wanted to put the graph together himself and see what was driving the results. And that began this amazing story where first of all he was getting this runaround, he couldn't get the data, and then nobody could figure out how the graph was put together. And so um, short, shortly into that process, Steve got a hold of me, we began working together on it, ended up publishing a couple of papers where we sort of finally diagnosed how the graph was made. There were some serious statistical errors in it. Um, this sparked this huge controversy in the U.S. Eventually, um, the U.S. Congress got involved. Um, the author of the study wouldn't release his code uh, to clarify, first of all, what data he used and how he did the analysis. So they, um, an investigative committee of Congress eventually requested his code, and he had to turn it over. Uh, two panels were set up. One, um, the, the National Research Council in the U.S., the other was headed by the chairman of the National Academy of Sciences Committee on Statistics. Uh, he put an expert group of statisticians together. The National Research Council put together a team of scientists. Uh, they both put out reports in the summer of 2006. We met with uh, the National Research Council panel and explained our work to them. They held a two-day meeting to go over all of this stuff. And um, both reports came out and uh, agreed with our analysis. They both said that the methodological choices were inappropriate. The, uh, the statistician panel was especially scathing. They just said his data does not support this conclusion that he was drawing. The methodology was wrong. Uh, and they also went further. They, they said the reason this happened and this became such a prominent study was that the people working in this field never talk with anyone outside their field. They, it's a closed circle of, of people working in this area. They're, they're quite critical of the fact that uh, a lot of the papers now being published in that field in paleoclimatology, it's the same group of authors working with each other, reviewing each other's work, and they don't interact with the mainstream. But, well, I mean, you're, you're, you're being very generous here, because the, the hockey stick was used time and time again. And in yeah. fact, it, it became almost iconic within the global warming movement. As you yeah. say, movies and pamphlets sent out to people across Canada. And you're saying to me it was never genuine, either because there was 
weak research or even dishonest research? I mean, this, this is this Kafkaesque. Um, well, what we found along the way was uh, uh, there were statistical errors, but one of the big problems was they'd used a contaminated data set. They, used, they had about 400 input data series of, of these temperature proxies, but yeah. the, st the way they're analyzing them was most of the data was just sort of thrown out, and there's one little segment of the data set that all the results depended on, and they're called bristlecone pine series. Mm -hmm. um, it's a funny-looking tree that grows mostly in... Um, uh, Western United States, and they grow very old, a thousand years old. But people have long known, and the National Academy of Sciences has re repeated this warning, you shouldn't use them for temperature reconstructions because they have this hockey stick shape that's got nothing to do with temperature. Well, it turned out that the hockey stick graph was formed by taking these bristlecone pines and just putting all the weight on them. And that the original author had redone his analysis, taking this, this small number of bristlecone pines out and the whole shape changes. The, the graph just loses its shape. It just becomes sort of noisy and, and nothing. So they knew when they published this study. Were they lying? I won't say that they lied. I think uh, what they did was they just didn't disclose the fundamental weakness of the original result. And then other people using the study, like you say, I mean, this became a big issue because everybody saw the hockey yeah. stick. And you know, some of the criticism that Steve McIntyre and I got was, well, why are you focusing so much on this one little paper published back in the but 90s? I don't interrupt you, but every time, and it's, it doesn't only apply to, to this issue, but whenever uh, someone uh, criticizes an aspect of, of conventional thinking, it's always, why are you concentrating on that one little right. aspect? And then you concentrate on another and another and the same argument. Why on this one? When in fact you've, you've actually deconstructed the whole approach, but they, they yeah. won't give you any room. Yeah, and on the case of uh, global warming, it's exactly the same. I mean, you go through any area, like for instance, Al Gore's movie, uh, there isn't a single assertion that he makes that stands up on close scrutiny. But you can go through piece by piece by piece, and people will do the same thing and say, well, okay, well, yeah, there's one, I mean, out of the whole movie, you find one, one mistake. Well, no, uh, out of the whole movie, you find piece after piece that falls apart. And in the case of climate change, because there's a whole bunch of individual conversations going on, you can debunk one aspect of it, and people think, well, they have all this room to retreat. But I, I do think people would be surprised to find, and it, it sort of takes an entire book, like Taken by Storm, to walk people through a bunch of these topics, that uh, the whole thing is, is, okay. is held together by duct tape. Mm. All right. You can't be right about Al Gore because Hollywood says he's correct, and Hollywood never gets it wrong. Uh, a, a 